Thank you everybody for coming and spending time with us today to talk about Jamf Nation uh, and the tools that we have made available and are continuing to make available. Uh, we're gonna spend the next 35 minutes, give or take, talking about some of the new things that were made in 2016 and things that you can see right in the product itself in Jamf Nation. Uh, and then at the very end, if any of that feels like review in the time, if you're a Jamf Nation Pro user, spending a lot of time, uh, that sounds a little bit weird, but we've found that actually a lot of people on Jamf Nation spend a lot of time on Jamf Nation, which is great. Um, so if it feels like review, at the end, one of the things that we're excited about this year is as a part of this product track, we can talk about future things. We can talk about things we want to do. And so at the end of the session, we're going to have five uh, major ideas or concepts that we'll kind of talk through what those things mean. Uh, and then we're going to ask for you to participate and help us prioritize which ones of those do you want to see. Uh, we do have our booth on the floor, kind of in between the lobby out here, that you can provide that feedback to, maybe write it on a piece of paper. Um, or obviously afterwards here, you can come up and talk to us. Uh, who are we? Uh, my name is John. Miller. I'm on the product team here at Jamf, uh, and we have Adam Picor as well. That'll work. Uh, and Adam Picor as well. I'll let Adam introduce himself and some Hi, of the stuff he does. My name is Adam Picor. I'm the manager of customer service here at Jamf, and uh, work with the Jamf Nation team to continue to expand the functionality. Yeah, so uh, the last time we talked about Jamf Nation, it's been a little bit, uh, it was actually the JNUC of 2012. And for those of you who were at JNUC 2012, you might recognize some of this. That's Jake, uh, who he said earlier in the keynote that he used to own Jamf Nation, is kind of very near and dear to his heart. And he was talking about the new pieces of technology and the things that we made, uh, other things that were happening organizationally at the time. Nine was about to get released. We had a bunch of other new technologies there that we wanted to bring into Jamf Nation. And that's really the last time we talked to everybody about changes that have been done in Jamf Nation, and we wanted to spend more time talking through that. Primarily, one of the things that we wanted to do through the Jamf Nation tools themselves was primarily three goals. So uh, historically, we used to be a mailing list, and then in 2011, we moved to what you now know as Jamf Nation. 2012, we made some changes, and when we made those changes, we brought those up. This is right from the YouTube uh, video of that talk, and Zach is talking about the goals that we had primarily to engage customer and customer communication. So being able to have the community engage with one another and help solve each other's problems. It's important to note that we view the community not necessarily as Jamf customers, but as Mac administrators, Mac OS and iOS administrators. So anybody in the world that's doing Apple administration and deployment uh, in any scale, whether that's from a Jamf Now perspective or Jamf Pro, is able to use uh, Jamf Nation to have these conversations, and we wanted to facilitate that more and more. The second goal with Jamf Nation was to the things that we needed to hear from you uh, on the products that we do provide. Uh, and so that customer to Jamf communication. What are the things that we need to do? And so the feature requests is really where that came through. We wanted to find out what do we have to do with our products? What changes do you need to see? And then how do we facilitate the, the um, voting system, essentially, so that we know this is very important to the community and this is not. Last but not least is we generate a lot of uh, knowledge and information. We kind of uh, capture all that through all the different work that you are doing, and we wanted to have a better way to deliver that to you uh, through that Jamf to, customer, to Jamf to customer communication. That's a tongue twister. Um, so those are really the primary goals that we have, and Jamf Nation as a, a whole hasn't deviated too much from those goals. We have slightly changed and maybe made a more of a foundation of those goals to be how do we make that self-sufficient? How do we enable you, as someone who's trying to accomplish a task, get the access to information, the access to the offerings from Jamf, or the access to help that you may need at any given time? How do we make that much more simple and a self-driven model? So the first one that we're gonna talk through is the access to information and the different things that we have uh, made available in 2016 and some changes that you may or may not be aware of. Like I mentioned, uh, the whole purpose of Jamf Nation as a start was to facilitate these types of conversations. And really, this is uh, a Mac admins meetup in the Twin Cities area. You might recognize some of the faces that are in that. Uh, there's some kind of uh, regulars that we've seen at a bunch of different things. Um, but we wanted to know, or we knew rather that we're not always at JNUC. We're not always at a Mac admin meetup, um, but we always have questions and workflows that we're trying to do. We're doing this stuff all the time, and so we wanted to use the discussions in Jamf Nation to allow you to connect with one another. 
That community itself is global. It's huge now. Uh, we get about 500,000 views a day from those 37,000 users. And what this means for you as an admin trying to accomplish a task and getting that access to information is that any time of day, if you have a question, post it to Jamf Nation, post it to the discussions. See what the community can do to help accomplish, no matter how uh, esoteric or weird or, um, hey, nobody has this problem, I don't know how I'm gonna get this solved. Post it and see what happens. When we're looking at the discussions themselves, just in the last year, we've had 4,167 unique discussions posted to Jamf Nation. So uh, whatever that turns out to be a day, I think it's uh, enough. We've got a lot of different people talking about 10, 12 a day, uh, posting new discussions. Discussions are just, uh, hey, I have a problem, and they mean nothing if no one's responding. And so the great thing that we see in the community itself is that of those 4,100, 3,624 got a response. Somebody in the community engaged with you on the problem that you're trying to face and actually said, hey, let's try to fix this together. Let's try to do this together. Some of the discussions are specific, help me accomplish a workflow. Others are, hey, we're going out, getting together. Hey, I'm going to be here on travels. Anybody want to meet up? Those things are all great. But either way, we're really happy that you have communicated so much that 86% of the posts get a response. Uh, we're really happy with this response rate. This is one of the things that we feel good about. Our tool set isn't in the way, and it's helping uh, you engage with one another. And we will continue to watch this and make sure we try to increase this as a primary goal for Jamf Nation. Now, you can post discussions, you can respond to them, but again, we're all trying to accomplish a task, a get to an end goal, and that's through the solved aspect of Jamf Nation in the discussions. So of those 4,100, about 20%, 751, were actually marked as solved. And the time that it took for somebody to post, I have a problem, for somebody to say, I might have a solution, and that original poster to go back and say, yep, that's the one, was less than three days. So within three days through Jamf Nation, you've been able to facilitate the conversations, engage with one another, and find answers to the problems that you may be solving. And I think you guys get a round of applause for that. That's really cool stuff there, really happy. It, if you haven't posted to Jamf Nation before, you can certainly do that. If you're just looking for information, you don't need to log in. All that stuff is there, and you can just search and find whatever you need to out of that. But uh, engage with each other as much as possible, and, that, uh, and let us know what things we might need to do to increase that engagement, and we'll talk about some of that as well. Going to that second, that uh, Jamf to customer communication, what are the things that we have that we can share with you? There's really two primary things that we uh, deliveries that we have of that. One is the knowledge base articles. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward one. Everybody understands KBs. There's nothing new, surprisingly technical or anything uh, fancy schmancy that we're doing here. Uh, but we want to continue to have uh, up-to-date KBs and have more and more of them. So we've added 25 in the year alone since last JNUC. And then we keep on going through and every single one, uh, when we need to update, we're looking to see, can we get those updated? And uh, now one change that we've made to the process for knowledge base articles, just so that you're aware, uh, is that the support organization is taking responsibility for the KBs. And all that really means is uh, we have now more people that can update those and keep those up to date and engage with different folks to make sure we have the right information. Uh, and we can do it in other languages. So today, actually, we posted our first knowledge base article in French. Um, and so other things are happening there. The next one in the access to information is uh, online documentation. So uh, if I had to give a dollar to every person who's downloaded the PDF, the admin guide, more than once, I wouldn't have any dollars left. Um, I don't have any dollars anyway, so <laughs> joke's on you. Uh, but uh, we had a huge request to get the online documentation and get the PDF converted to online. And it's really, we've treated it more as uh, making an HTML version of the online documentation and extending that to say, uh, how can I get to it? Can I search? So docs.jamsoftware.com, you can get directly to the latest version of the HTML documentation. Um, within the product, there's a couple links to that. There's a little pro tip, uh, and that will continue to increase. If you remember, Dean said yesterday during the keynote that the lines between Jamf Pro and Jamf Now and Jamf Nation will blur more and more. Um, and this is one of the ways that we're trying to do that with the uh, introduction of the online documentation. But the easy thing is, in Jamf Nation, you search for a keyword, and you'll get links out of the admin guide as well. So improvements to the access to information, both from the things that you are facilitating in conversations with one another, as well as the different things that we have in knowledge base articles and online documentation. 
The next that we want to talk about is access to offerings from Jamf. And really, this is uh, the products that you have used and are using in your environment, Jamf Now, Jamf Pro, uh, any of our plugins, those sorts of things. How do we get access to that, and how do we facilitate that delivery? Back in 2012, uh, the initial introduction of My Assets came about. Um, and really, after you log into Jamf Nation, on the upper right-hand corner, you can click on your name and go to My Assets. And you can see what you all have for assets. And we'll call out a couple different things. Uh, again, this might be a little bit review, but we want to make sure that everybody knows that that's there. Um, there's some things that you may see here on the screen that are new. Um, and so one is that the products are all downloadable. So if you are uh, perpetual or subscription licensing, you can certainly download a version of Jamf Pro. This is 996, so Casper Suite. Um, and you can use that in your environment as well as your activation code. So when you go through your, your renewal process, rather, you can download uh, and, and get your activation code right from Jamf Nation. There's also a beta program that's here. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and my account team, we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. And then the partner portal. So the cool thing about my assets is we have a little bit of an intelligence about the organization that you are, the type of business that you are, uh, and we can dynamically put different information here, whether that's the tools that you're using in your environment or the access to different things from Jamf, all within Jamf Nation. We've also added a store, um, and for anyone who's used the store, thank you. There's a lot of things that are here. Uh, this is one of the great ways that we have uh, extended the functionality of Jamf Nation to provide a more self-sufficient way for you to do the outcome and accomplish the task that you're looking to do. So here under the software, once you go into the store, which is under the More menu, there's store there. In software, you can see the Casper Suite is there, and I can renew. So the entire renewal process can be done via uh, Jamf Nation, and uh, Adam will talk about that in a little bit. We also have access to other tools. So if you're not using the SCCM plugin, for example, this will be published here, and you can add to cart, and just like any other online shopping experience, perform your checkout, and then that will show up under your assets so that you can very quickly uh, get that tool, download that, run that in your environment, and then when you need any help, we're always obviously there to help you. Jamf also has a vast uh, collection, I guess, of uh, certification courses and offerings of different courses that we have in trainings for you uh, and others in your organization. So that's split between the training pass or the individual courses. And for anyone that's not familiar with the training pass, there's an individual training pass, which sends you as an individual to any number of the courses that we have around the globe uh, any number of times that you want. Uh, and the organization is for anyone within your organization to go as many times as you want. So depending on how many people you're looking to train within your organization and get certification on our products, you can get different training passes. And you can also get the courses on a kind of an a la carte type menu where you can just add to cart. Again, very similar checkout experience to anything that you're used to uh, for online shopping and begin signing up immediately. You can see Jamf Nason also shows the classes full, what's there, what's available, and that we have them all over the globe. The class list itself is, uh, generally speaking, a rolling quarter window. So three months at a time, we try to show what's there. So if you're trying to plan your education and what certification courses you might attend, you can certainly just go to Jamf Nation and view what things are where and what might make sense for you to travel and, and what you can fit in budget-wise and those sorts of things. The last thing in the store that I want to talk about is the swag store, and it feels a little bit weird to uh, include this in here, but uh, access to Jamf hoodies is still a top 30 feature request on Jamf Nation. So if you guys want it, we provide it <laughs> as best we can. So uh, this is actually just a link to ID Works, which is our um, you know, printer for the clothing that we have and the different uh, you know, mugs and shirts and that sort of thing. Um, and you can download, or not download, you can go to that and purchase and it'll ship right to your house. Um, so that's here right under the store. The last thing I want to talk about uh, is the beta program before we let Adam talk a little bit about the access to help. And really, we want to talk about the beta program because uh, we heard a lot of feedback that um, we did a bad job of communicating that the beta program existed. So uh, the first, we do have a beta program, and it's completely facilitated through Jamf Nation. So when a beta program is open for a release of the Casper Suite, historically, Jamf Pro moving forward, um, that you'll get an email, and it'll say, hey, beta program's available. Click here to get the newest version of Jamf Pro. Cool, you click the button, it'll take you to Jamf Nation, and here, right under the My Assets, which is under your, your username there, you can see that we have the beta program that will just dynamically show up when it's active, and if there's multiples running at one time, you can sign up for the one that you want. Any NDAs that need to be in place, that happens automatically through Jamf Nation. The provisioning of a cloud instance of that version, if you're interested in cloud, or if you wanted to put that 
on-premise, you can certainly do that as well. Um, and then the last part in the beta program is that there are discussions that can happen, and we have a team of people anytime there's a beta program that just monitor the discussions for beta. So those are under NDA, but it's certainly uh, available for anybody to sign up, sign the NDA, and then participate in that. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the changes that we're looking to make in the beta program shortly. With that, I'll hand it off to Adam. Thank you, John. So when we look at the access to health and information, it's something that, that we really think about and try to take a light-handed approach at. Uh, we understand that this is the community that's been built by you and for you, and we want to make sure that we're offering an extension of that community, and that is JAMF support. So as you look at the available health that we have, the first thing that you may, know, may be aware of is that everybody out there in the community has a JAMF party. That JAMF party can be found on JAMF Nation, under your name in the right corner, there's a drop down My Account Team. The Jamf Party is that person, that one stop shop of somebody that you can reach out to, regardless of uh, the question that you may have or if you're unsure of where to go in the organization, whether it be a sales question, a support question, or a renewal question. This person might not be the person that answers your question ultimately, but at the end of the day, they are the person that can carry that process forward to ensure that you're getting the help you need. They're also a, also a good person to ensure that we're getting the, the feedback that we're looking for from you. And if you have any questions or concerns or feedback, it's a good point of contact for you to reach out to. As we look at the help that we offer on JF Nation, we're, we're, we hear you. We're, we're receiving feedback from uh, feature requests. We're receiving feedback from support incident tickets. And we're also receiving feedback from solution summaries or satisfaction surveys that we send out with the solution summary. If you've opened a support case in the last nine months and that support case has been closed for you, I, I'm guessing that you may have received one of our solution summary emails that go out at the end of every closed case. Along with that should be a solution summary that provides the issue summary, the root cause, as well as the solution summary but it allows for you to provide a satisfaction survey. And that's kind of a one through five rating on how we've served your needs, as well as takes you into an area where you can provide direct feedback. And we take that feedback very seriously. And one of the big feedbacks, that, or the, one, the number one feedback that we received in Champ Nation is the community in which I live in. And as John mentioned, there's 37,000 of us, 37,000 of you logging in or unique accounts with over 500,000 hits a day. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're meeting you where you're already at. And support chat was one of those things that came up frequently that we wanted to be sure if you had a quick question that you can log into Jeff Nation, go to the support functionality that is in the uh, banner for the support button, and you have access to live support chat. That live support chat will actually convert to a support incident ticket and you can continue your communication through GF Nation on that case. So for a while now, we've had support incident tickets, support cases in GF Nation. And it's one of those things that worked. It was a place where you could submit a ticket. It was a place where you could view your tickets. But it wasn't a place that you could solely do all of your work for your case. So we had a history of the cases. So what we've done is to better break up the open cases versus the closed cases, we've split those up so you can quickly identify the open from the closed. We've also put, for uh, categorization, we've put that solution summary that I mentioned, and we put that actually into the, the GIF Nation feed. So now you can go back in your case history, and you can actually identify the issue that you had a possible root cause, and possibly more importantly, the solution summary. So if you actually are experiencing an issue that you've uh, previously had or some behavior, you can actually go back and identify what problems or what you've had and what you've gone through in the past. Another clunky part of previous GF Nation case history was, oddly enough, you could create a case, you could communicate to a support case, but if that case was closed, and for any reason you needed to reply or reopen that case, you had to jump back to your email, find the last email thread that we had sent you, and actually reply to that to reopen your case. So we've actually, in GF Nation, added the functionality so you can reopen your support case to continue working on that incident if for any reason you would need to. 
Another area of feedback that we heard is that, hey, Jeff Nation cases are great, but I can't submit a file, a log file, a screenshot, or anything else with any expected behavior that I can, I can provide, which is more in the first phase that support will often ask me for. So I create the ticket, I reply to the ticket, but I can't provide all the information. So we now have the ability to attach up to a 250 megabyte file directly through JF Nation. <laughs> so we look at the, the support incident tickets and you know, your communication directly with support. And again, we want that to be the extension of the community that we have. And when you need our help, we want to be there where you already live. Now there's areas on JAMF where you were forced to communicate directly with JAMF. The renewal was one of those where you almost inevitably had to work with somebody from JAMF software, from JAMF, to um, process that renewal. And, and a while back, we actually did open up uh, the availability for JAMF Nation renewals. But I didn't think it met everybody's needs, and we didn't think it met everybody's needs. And so, as John already mentioned, if you go to JF Nation to the store, you do have the ability to renew the JF license. Now, the area where we've been able to really increase the eligibility for the renewal process online without having to interact directly with JF is the eligibility of you can pay with a credit card by adding license renewal to your, to your store or a shopping card otherwise. And we also now have the ability to renew using a PO. There's a lot of value in renewing directly on JF Nation. And one is immediate access to downloads and the activation code if that's what you're looking for. We also have extended the eligibility globally. So many of you, most of you should be eligible with over 75% of our customers in the US and over 60% of our customers globally are currently eligible for renewal through JF Nation. Hmm. And at this point, I'm going to hand it back over to John to talk about the JF Nation tools. Yeah, so that's a lot of the changes that we've made in the year for JF Nation. Some of those uh, are just an awareness thing, and so like I said, maybe a little bit of review. But uh, other things that are brand new, like the online documentation, the extension of some of the renewal process, in the next little bit, we want to talk through some of the changes that we want to make to Jamf Nation, and this is where uh, your participation is certainly invaluable in this process. So uh, we're going to go through five different things, five different major areas of uh, big rocks, if you will, that we're looking to make some changes, and then we're going to ask you to just create that list, one through five. What's the most important thing to you? And if I could get anything I want in the world specific to Jamf Nation, <laughs> this is the first one, and then you know the, the fifth one I couldn't care much less, uh, or it's just not important. And, and if they're all very equal to you, that's all good. Uh, if we're missing something as well, we certainly want to hear that feedback. But the first thing that we want to do is talk about the access to information, some of the extensions that we want to provide for that. So uh, like I said earlier, one of the things that we're looking to do is to blur the lines between the products. And right now, we have uh, the information that's available through package manifests that you are all creating, the information and extension attributes that you are all creating, and for managed preferences. One of the things that we want to do is, uh, in this solution sharing idea is kind of twofold. The first being, what other things are being commonly defined across you as the administrator community that we can share with one another? So things like smart group definitions, patch policies, and patch package definitions. Um, anything that you are creating that others might be creating as well, can we leverage that information and make that available for everybody, just like we have with the extension attributes and the managed preferences um, and with the package manifest, so that anybody can use that and not have to uh, replicate work? We're all kind of engineers. We hate that replicating work side. Um, so that, that is one aspect. The other aspect of it in that solution sharing is making that more easily available right in the product you're using. So if you're in Jamf Pro and you're looking for an extension attribute, you want to add a new one, can we show that list of things that are available in Jamf Nation or at least provide a way to search for some of those? Uh, and then you can add that or any of those other tools that are being uh, defined on multiple occasions through you as the community. So that's the first, that solution sharing and expanding some of that. The second one is, again, around that access to information and uh, is kind of the global community. And one of the ways that we're uh, talking about this is how do we engage the community globally, not necessarily so that somebody um, in India can engage with somebody in the UK to solve a problem, but what can we use in Jamf Nation to understand 
the deployment programs, the methods of work for that individual in India, for someone in Japan, for someone in the US, whatever it might mean uh, for their specific deployment and make that easily available for them to see these are other people that might have that and contextualize that a little bit. The obvious one is language. We can change the language for anyone that's not a native English speaker. Uh, we have some of that now. This is, uh, of all time, 18 discussions that have started with the French tag. Um, so we can do some work to make that a little bit easier. But we want to enable that to understand and provide some filtering to say, I'm in this area. Uh, what are the things that are specific to me? What deployment programs or how are people solving this problem when they don't have this deployment program or that sort of thing? Those types of conversations are almost always based on location and uh, are very easy to lose in the filters of all the rest of the, the discussions that are there. So we want to provide a little bit more contextualization around that. And we'll get around uh, to that contextualization idea later as well. The next is along the access to offerings. And again, blurring the lines between the products. Uh, this one doesn't have a header because we just wanted to show the full thing of a mock-up of what we've had internally for inline documentation. So now that we have online documentation, so HTML docs, why can't uh, you, as a Jamf Pro, search within the tool itself and get not only keyword results for um, in your version, um, but also from knowledge base articles, from discussions that have happened, uh, and from the documentation as well. So we want to provide these things, whether that's from a search function or more of a tool tip. Um, and actually, uh, Jamf Pro version 10 will have a tool tip in a couple different places as we test some of this out, view traffic and hits and that sort of thing. Um, but kind of show that information and publish it right in the tool in Jamf Now or in Jamf Pro so that you can get that access to the information uh, and the offerings that we have much more simply. I'd said contextualized data before, and we want to expand that to more than just the location that you are. But uh, the easiest way to think about this is others like me, uh, is kind of how I've been talking about it internally with the team. Um, and what that means is uh, I am a K-12 school with 500 iOS devices and nothing else. Can I have a way to filter all of the conversations that are happening to adjust that sort of thing? I'm an enterprise organization with 90,000 devices deploying 1,300 Macs a week. Uh, can I filter things to just that? It'll just be one uh, so far. <laughs> uh, but those types of things and being and able to contextualize that data, um, the main goal that we want to see out of this and why we want to do this is that we think this would directly impact the response rate uh, to make it higher. It would impact the number of solved problems because you can immediately empathize with the people that you see in your result set um, because they have things that are like you, they do things similarly, or might approach a problem very similarly. Uh, and then it might, we think it'll shrink the time it takes to get a solution from the community in those situations where you want to do that. So uh, this screenshot is here. Basically, when you go under uh, your profile under the name in the upper right, you can go to your profile and edit that, and there's the My Topics that you can see. Um, right now, you can filter on tags and say, email me when this, 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 or posts, um, or don't email me when this happens. A very similar concept, um, but for all the things that are available in Jamf Nation, make that filter to th show things just like me. The last one that we want to talk about uh, of the big five, I guess, is uh, on the access to help and a preview and test environment. Uh, this has been one that's come up a lot of different times in a lot of different ways. Um, and we want to talk about how we can use Jamf Nation to facilitate a better beta experience and a better preview of the builds that we have. Um, right now, the beta program is there. We talked about that earlier. Uh, and one of the things that we want to do and why we want to do this is uh, provide multiple beta programs at once that I can see what's patch doing right now. It's a big hot topic if everybody's interested. What's self-service looking like right now? What can we have here? Uh, from a product owner team, we want to get that perspective as immediate as we can so that we can make any changes. Or if we misunderstood a problem that you had, you could say, hey, nope, don't do that. Do it this way. And we want to use Jamf Nation to facilitate the delivery of that product. Uh, but also, the beta program helps us develop the product to give to you to use the product. But one of the major um, trends I guess we see is version over version. Every time we release a version of Jamf Pro, we see a large uptick in the number of cases that aren't about technical issues, but are more around workflow. And uh, hey, there's this new thing here. How do I use that? And for us, 
That's a problem we can easily solve by showing that to you earlier. And so we want to have a better facilitation of that process so that when a new version is generally available, you already know how you're going to utilize the new technology to apply to your workflows exactly to solve that problem. You've already tested it. You've had test environments with test devices that have done this work. And it's just a very simple upgrade process so that you can start using things like SSO, start using the LDAP proxy work that we did. Uh, any number of things that we're making available, we want to show more red, uh, frequently and more easily for you utilizing Jamf Nation. So those are the big five, uh, the solution sharing, the global community, inline documentation, contextualized data, and then a better preview or test environment. Uh, again, take those, write those in any order that you see fit for what you want the most to what you couldn't care much less about. And if there's something that we're missing, please write that down as well and let us know. Um, that's the last of what we have for uh, anything other than questions. So with that, we want to take some questions and I think Michael's got a few, maybe? Yeah, we've got some great questions. Thanks for tweeting those out. And again, uh, hashtag JNUC2016Tools if you want to throw something up. It's time for a few. John, do you wanna also want to point out your email as yeah. another method? Yeah, um, I did put my email on there. So if you have any other questions outside of this that we didn't get to, john.miller at jamf.com is my email. We now also have a John Miller, another at Jamf, but he doesn't have an H. So uh, if someone who's talking about releases email you, that's the other John, um, but that's me. Feel free to email me. Awesome. Uh, one of the questions. So uh, it's easier to search Google for a discussion topic. Any plans on optimizing the searches within Jamf Nation? Yeah. Um, the team is here. We can talk about some of the technical specifics for uh, how we do the searching and what stuff is there. Um, that is certainly one of the things that we're constantly going back through to figure out how can we make that easier? How do we get better search results, uh, higher fidelity search results? Um, and if I talk about the tech much more than that, I'd be almost making it up. So um, the team can come up afterwards. They didn't know I was going to say that, but they can. <laughs> and uh, can answer some of the specifics about what we're doing around that if you're curious. You're welcome. Great. Uh, why do feature request votes go up by 10 instead of just one? That's I've a great question. I've always wondered this. Yeah, yeah. So Maybe a couple others have wondered this. Yeah, a, few, a couple chuckles in the crowd. So uh, feature requests went up by 10. We'll get a little bit into uh, what we didn't know at the time and what we wanted to be able to facilitate later. So um, what we didn't know at the time is uh, other th expansions to feature requests that we wanted to do is um, if somebody that's newer to uh, managing with Jamf Pro were to uh, uh, vote a feature request up, that might give different weight than someone that's a 10-year vet using Jamf Pro and knows a lot of what they're doing. So we wanted to provide some sort of flexibility in the voting system to say someone who's been doing this a lot, when they post, when they have something, they might show up differently. And we just didn't know, would that be valuable? And what we did with the feature request voting is we don't know how we would do that, but we know that if we give it to just one point at a time, it would limit our ability later. And someone might say, well, my vote's only half a point. That's weird. Um, and so we, we wanted to build some flexibility in to say, well, later on, if we were to ever kind of do a more gaming or uh, smart voting, I guess, um, based on any number of things, um, we could have some flexibility in the voting system for that too. So um, we made it like thinking, well, we might have to do something with that later. And we've never found that we had to do something with that later and that the community is just helping itself do the stuff. And so now we're at 10. <laughs> so I wish I had a more complicated answer, I guess. Uh, is there any plan to add a real bug reporter to Jamf Nation? Great question. Um, so yes and no. Hashtag um, please. Hashtag please. OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, sounds like a sixth thing for our list of other efforts that we should do for the bug reporting and, and stuff that's there. Uh, we have seen the posts, we have seen the Google Docs, we are watching that stuff. Uh, there's stuff that we really like about it, uh, the self-formation of that, uh, and there's stuff that we really don't like about it, like do we know that the information's up to date? And we'd rather provide that stuff more simply. Uh, so I'll say, will it be delivered through Jamf Nation? No idea. Um, do we have other tech available that we might make? Uh, we are a big Atlassian shop, uh, and they have functionality that we could leverage to make some of that information available. We do have a desire to solve the problem of, is this a known bug or not? Yes, we do. We want to make that more readily available, more uh, simple to find out and understand. We don't know exactly how we're going to go about doing that, and the priority of which uh, we're certainly open to that conversation. A couple of these just came in double, so we're going to jump it to the top. And that okay. is a question around uh, the ability for my support cases to be viewable by other people within my organization, not just me. Yeah, um, that's been a big one right now. Uh, 
what happens is it follows you as an individual and not the organization that you're in, so others can view that. Uh, and we certainly want to do more around that um, and the health of different things, the, the discussions and the case history for stuff that's there. Um, we've got some logistics we're figuring out on how to do that, but that's been uh, probably a two-year-old feature request that we are still kind of figuring out. Where does this fit? Is this a lots of people want this, a few people want this, what we need, um, and want to do something around that, but don't know exactly how we're going to get about it. So along those same lines, yeah. yesterday we saw some information about ServiceNow integrations. Is there any plan to maybe try and incorporate Jamf cases and ServiceNow tickets? Not today. We certainly can. We have looked at uh, other help desk tools as well, um, and, and having uh, an internal version of Jamf Nation that's really just a skinned your help desk. Um, and then we realized through just different conversations that um, that's not getting much other than another way to get to the help desk that you're already using, and just kind of some complications in that, and uh, it's not all that helpful. So we decided against it. Um, we can look at it. Awesome. Uh, if I find outdated scripts or KB information on Jamf Nation, how do we notify the moderators? Yeah, great question. Uh, one of those, the, the big out-to-date places we saw was with the knowledge base articles, and that's where support was taking that. Uh, your uh, Jamf buddy is the primary place to go to, to say, hey, we found this, and they have the paths, the escalation into the right people to make those changes. So um, that's the path to go. Uh, do you still use uh, Box or some other third-party site for submitting si files regarding cases? Uh, some companies block these third-party services. Files through, yeah, uh, yes, we do, actually. In fact, we uh, files upload through Champ Nation uh, go through Dropbox. Dropbox, cool. Uh, have you considered adding a means to exchange direct contact information, something like a, a private forum messaging for community members to connect directly? Um, we have considered that. Um, yeah. What stuff is there? This is what we need help on. Uh, what stuff you want to be able to share? How we say, yes, share mine or don't share mine, and how that is engaged with one another um, is the primary stuff. They're like, how do we do that? And what is it? Uh, do you have that information elsewhere that we can make available so that you don't have multiple things to manage and update? Um, are kind of the primary uh, problems that we want to try to solve in that, but we do want to find out a way other than connect with an email or publicly post our individual email addresses. Um, the profile now has your Twitter account and your LinkedIn account, and those are two ways we've tried that, but it's not, uh, obviously not super perfect, but we're getting there. Can we purchase additional device licenses through Jamf Nation? Is this a feature that's coming? You can purchase feature uh, or additional licenses through Jamf Nation. So when you go through the renewal process, you can see that there's uh, the number of seats that you have. You can upload the um, JSS summary right out of Jamf Pro, um, which we'll have to change the name of that. <laughs> uh, but you can upload that and then see uh, how many seats you have, how many you currently have licenses for, and then how many any growth that you might need to have. So all that's automatic to say, this is how many I've got. I need to purchase this many more. And if you know you have specific plans, you can add more on top of that at renewal time. Cool. I'll throw one more out here. If you've got a burning question, make sure to tweet it quick. Uh, anything you can mention just on the changes to the URL? Jamf Nation now is a slightly different home. Uh, should we care? Anything we need to know about that since there are some under the hood changes? Yeah, there. Uh, nothing that should happen or nothing that uh, should impact your day-to-day -day activities. The URL change happened as a part of the overall rebrand, so we're all now a part of Jamf, um, and, and that is there instead of a separate subdomain. Um, it is a I can't remember the exact word for it, but it's basically a sub URL instead of a subdomain as a part of that. Um, most of that is that when you search it and when you search in Jamf Nation, you'll find information outside of just one individual product. So uh, a lot of the architectural changes were to enable some of that stuff that we're trying to do, but um, for the most part, it should be completely transparent. Um, I am still in the habit of going to jamfnation.com, which still redirects to jamfnation.jamsoftware.com, which still redirects to jamf.com slash jamf-nation. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I'm in the same boat, and one day uh, that'll just flip in my head automatically for me, or I'll use Text Expander to get it done. But. Awesome. One more round of applause for John and Thank Adam. You. Thank you very much, everybody.